In section 3.8, we're going to take tangent line equations, which we had a lot of practice writing before this lesson, and use those uh, to find approximations to function values. And we'll also talk about quickly something called a differential. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to really just take problems that we've seen before, in a sense, where we were asked to write tangent lines, and actually take that and use it as a concept to approximate function values. Uh, which is called linear approximation. So the goal of linear approximation is to approximate a curve with a line. The main reason we'd want to do that is because it's easier to use a line than a curve. And I'll go over a few examples so you can understand what we mean by that. But the thing you have to keep in mind is we're thinking about hard functions that we can't do without a calculator. So maybe square root functions, cubic root, cubic root functions, things like that. So all we're going to have to do is find the equation of a tangent line and use the tangent line instead of the original function. And again, take the point of view of you don't have a calculator. So where does this idea come from? Well, let's just take some random function here and magnify it, zoom into it. So this graph you can see here, and there's a little warning, is not to scale. We are very zoomed in to this graph. So this question mark. We're trying to find the uh, y value at this question mark, which I guess we would call f of question mark. And that would be our exact value. I want to know what the value of the function is at this question mark. And let's suppose something. Let's suppose some distance away we have another x value, but I'm going to call that a known easy point. And the best way I can get you to understand that is you're going to see this in our first example in a couple slides is uh, the square root function. Let's pretend the question mark was 4.1 and the x was 4. We know that the square root of 4 is 2, so that's why I'm calling it, calling it the known easy point. So that would just be f of x. So this is a zoomed in graph. We are very, very zoomed in, which means this graph is not to scale. And that distance between the x that we know and the question mark which we're trying to find is a very small distance, which, is, which we're going to call delta x. So what we can do is write a tangent line. At that point x, which is our known easy point, we could definitely write a tangent line equation. And you'll notice the tangent line emulates, or behaves, so to speak, like the function near that point of tangency. So if we look at this tangent line, you'll notice that if I evaluate the tangent line at the question mark, that's not going to give me the exact value, but I could definitely call it an approximation. And this little distance right here is how close those two values are. The exact value is what I'd really want to find, but the approximation is pretty close. So using this idea of a tangent line, we can approximate functions without ever actually evaluating the function. We can just write a tangent line and evaluate that instead. So once we talk about approximations, we have to talk about error. And on the AP test, uh, that will definitely be asked of you. So if we use a tangent line to approximate a curve, it's going to give us a good estimate as long as that point isn't too far away from our known point. And again, the best example I can give you just to think about this would be what would be the square root of 4.1. Well, luckily the square root of 4 is really close by, and we know that to be 2. So we could use that as our known easy point. So how do we verify or show that we know our error is either less than or greater than? Well, you can see from this picture here and from the explanation on the left over here, if your graph is concave up, your tangent line is below your curve. And since your tangent line represents an approximation, that would mean your approximation is less than the actual value. In a graph that is concave down at the point of tangency, you'll, know your t you'll notice your tangent line is above your curve. And since your tangent line represents an approximation, that would mean the approximation is greater than the actual or the true value.
the purpose of this animation is to kind of get you to appreciate that as you get closer and closer and closer to the point of tangency, your tangent line and your curve start looking a lot like each other. So of course, if you could evaluate the tangent line instead of your function, while that wouldn't give you an exact value, it would be pretty close. And I'm going to kind of circle this area right here so you can kind of see what I mean. The tangent line and the curve, as you start zooming into that point of tangency, which is over here, start acting a lot like each other. In other words, it's hard to distinguish between uh, the function and the tangent line. While the tangent line might be a lot easier to deal with than the function, that's kind of why we would want to use a tangent line approximation. Okay, let's take a look at that uh, example I was talking about earlier in the first slide and trying to approximate the square root of 4.1 using a tangent line. So the good news about this section is we're just taking those tangent line equations, which we had plenty of practice writing before this lesson, and we're going to just take that one step further and use that tangent line to approximate function values. So luckily, we're just dealing with two steps here. Writing the equation of the tangent line at the point you know, and then using that equation of a tangent line to approximate the value we're looking for. In other words, just plug in and evaluate. So let's go ahead and look at that example. What is the value of the square root of 4.1? Well, again, take the point of view of we don't have a calculator. We kind of take for granted that we can just type that in a calculator, but what if we didn't have one and we wanted to approximate that using a tangent line? Well, we got to find a point and a slope. So let's go ahead and uh, go through those uh, steps. So we have a function and in this case, it's the square root of x. We're trying to find the square root of 4.1. So the function we're dealing with here is the square root function, or the square root of x. And if you want a little visual of it, it's down here at the bottom. So what do we really want in this problem? Well, since we know our function is the square root function, we're looking, of f of, we're looking for f of 4.1, which would be the square root of 4.1. And I'm going to go ahead and plot that on our graph at 4.1. The y value is the square root of 4.1, which we're trying to approximate. So what is the known easy point that we have close by? We happen to know the square root of 4. So f of 4, which would be the square root of 4, is equal to 2. So that's the point we're going to use to write our tangent line equation. And again, I'm going to plot that on our graph and draw that tangent line. And you'll notice you can't really tell the difference between the tangent line and the function, the square root function, at that point of tangency. They are very close to each other, so that would be a pretty good approximation. It won't be exact, but we're just trying to approximate these functions that we can't do without a calculator. So let's go ahead and write our tangent line equation. We need a point and a slope. We already have our point, which is 4 comma 2. Now we need our slope. And as a reminder, hopefully we all remember that derivatives represent slopes, and specifically slopes of tangent lines. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. Our function is the square root of x. Derivative friendly would mean write that as a power, so that's 1 half. And hopefully we've had plenty of practice taking these derivatives, so it should be easy by now. But as a quick reminder, the derivative of x to the 1 half, we bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, so we'll have 1 half x to the negative 1 half. While that is correct, we need to take this derivative and plug in a point, our x value, which is 4 here. So I think we should rewrite this a little more simplified, so we can take that negative power, send it to the bottom, and we're left with a simplified derivative of 1 over 2 square root of x. I'm trying to find the slope at 4, so we'll take that value of 4 and plug it in. The derivative evaluated at 4 is equal to 1 fourth. Once we have our slope, and once we have our point, we can take that and plug it into our point-slope formula. We're going to plug in our y of 2, our x of 4, and our slope of 1 fourth. As a quick reminder, my recommendation when you all are doing these problems is to not simplify your tangent line equation. At this step right here, I would actually recommend that you plug in 4.1. 
I'm going to go ahead and simplify it for the purposes of going through those processes, just in case you run into problems where you would have to simplify them. But if you do not have to simplify your tangent line equation, don't. I would just plug in your 4.1 right here and evaluate that. So without going over the little details of the steps here, when you simplify your tangent line equation, you'll be left with y equals 1 fourth x plus 1. But again, these two are the same. I just recommend you use the unsimplified one. Okay, now we're trying to find f of 4.1. We're going to use our tangent line instead of our original function, which is the square root function. We don't know how to find the square root of 4.1, but we can most certainly plug in 4.1 into our tangent line. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 4.1, this is 4.1 right here, as 41 tenths, just to make the math go a little bit easier without a calculator. And we'll end up with 41 over 40 plus 1, which we could rewrite as 40 over 40. And of course, adding those two fractions is nice and simple. We'll get 81 fortieths. So this answer that I have here is an approximation. It's not an exact value. The square root of 4.1 is some value. What I have here with 81 over 40 is an approximation to the square root of 4.1. So just how good is this approximation? Well, let's take a look. If you were to type in the square root of 4.1 into a calculator, you get 2.024. If you were to take 81 over 40 and type it into a calculator, you get 2.025. A pretty remarkable approximation considering all we did was use a tangent line. Okay, let's do one more example. In this uh, example, instead of looking at the square root function, we're going to look at a cubic root function. And in this case, we want to approximate the value of the cubic root of 7.9. So of course, our function that we're looking at here is the cubic root parent function, so the cubic root of x. And just as again a visual, there's the cubic root function, or part of the cubic root function. And we want to know what f of 7.9 is. In other words, we want to know what the cubic root of 7.9 is. What known point do we have that is close by? Well, 8. The cubic root of 8 is equal to 2. So this is our known easy point. In other words, it's the value we're going to use, our x and our y, when we plug into our um, tangent line equation. So we have our x value of 8 and our y value of 2. If I plot that and draw the tangent line, again, just like the last example, it is very hard to tell the difference between the tangent line and your function at the point of tangency. They're basically right on top of each other. So again, the approximation should be pretty good. But you'll notice out over in this area, maybe at about two or so, our tangent line and our curve really aren't that close together. So you can kind of see as a good comparison over here at eight, the tangent line and the curve are really close to each other. Over at x equals two, they're really not so close to each other. Okay, so we need a point and a slope. We have our point again right here. Let's go ahead and find our slope. Our function is the cubic root of x, or in other words, x to the one-third. When we bring the power down and reduce the power by one, we're left with one over three x to the two-thirds. Again, we should really rewrite this in a more simplified manner uh, because we're trying to do this without a calculator. So we can rewrite x to the two-thirds power as the cubic root of x all squared. So we're trying to find our slope at 8 since that's the point that we know. If we plug in 8, we can evaluate that quite simply and get a slope of 1 over 12. Once we have our point, once we have our slope, we can take those values and plug them into our point slope equation. Once you do that, like I said, my recommendation is to not simplify it and by moving the 2 over, you're really not simplifying it too much. I guess what I really mean is don't really distribute that 1 12th. It can only possibly open you up to making some silly errors, possibly. Um, so there's our equation of a tangent line. 1 12th times x minus 8 plus 2. And that represents an approximation to our function, the cubic root of x. So we want to approximate what f of 7.9 would be. 
If I take 7.9 and plug it into the tangent line equation and evaluate that, you'll get 1.99167. So keep something in mind. On the AP test, we should only be keeping three decimal places, especially if this was an open-ended uh, question. We should only have three decimal places. The reason I'm putting more decimal places is to show you how close of an approximation this really was once I show you what really the cubic root of 7.9 is. But before we talk about that, let's look at the error. What would the actual value of the cubic root of 7.9 be? Well, that would involve talking about the error. And if you recall from the first slide, we determine the error based on concavity. You can see from the picture above, our graph is concave down. If your graph is concave down, the tangent line would be above your graph. And when we interpret that in terms of this linear approximation kind of a problem, we know that that approximation then is a greater than value than the actual or the true value because the graph is concave down. And again, as a little comparison to how good this approximation was, if you use a calculator to get the cubic root of 7.9, you get 1.99163. Very, very close to our approximation, which was 1.99167. Okay, in the first two examples, we knew the function we were dealing with, so of course if we had a calculator, we could have typed that in the calculator and figured out what the square root of 4.1 was or the cubic root of 7.9. But there are other types of problems that kind of illustrate the usefulness of tangent lines, like these two AP practice problems. And in this case, without even reading the problem, um, you can see there is no equation given in this first example. So how would we ever find what f of 5.023 is? Well, maybe this tangent line uh, could help us out. So we want to write the equation of a tangent line to the function at x equals 5. Given that f of 5 is 3, f prime of 5 is 1 half. And then I want to use that tangent line to approximate f of 5.023. So again, as a kind of different way to look at this tangent line approximation. In the first two examples we did, we could have evaluated that using a calculator. In this one, we really have no way of figuring out what f of 5.023 is since we don't know the function. So our best bet is to use a tangent line instead. So like in those first two examples and every example we've seen before, we're going to use our point-slope formula, which means we need a point and a slope. Luckily, we have one of those things out of the way. We know the point that we're given is 5 comma 3 from above. So what slope are we dealing with? Well, since the point in question is 5, we need to know the slope at 5 so we can write this tangent line. And sure enough, from above, they tell us that f prime of 5 is equal to 1 half. Or in other words, the slope is equal to 1 half. When we take the x, y, and the slope, plug them into our equation, and move the 3 over and simplify, we'll get our tangent line to be 1 half x plus 1 half. But again, if you kind of want to avoid some possible errors in your math if you're doing this and you're not quite confident in those skills, uh, I would definitely use the unsimplified version. Either of these two equations that I boxed are perfectly acceptable. Okay, now we can use our tangent line to approximate the value that we're looking for. We want to find what f of 5.023 is, so since we don't know what the function is, we can use our tangent line instead. And if you, flip, if you plug in 5.023 into your tangent line and evaluate that, you'll get 3.0115. In this particular problem, just as a quick note, it was a multiple choice question where I didn't print the answer choices, so that's why there's more decimal places. But again, if this was an open response question, please only keep three decimal places. Okay, how about another AP test practice problem? Uh, in this case, we do know our function. It's sine of kx plus 3. They're also telling us that the derivative at 0 is equal to k, and I want to approximate the value of f of 0 0.03. So how are we going to do this problem? It doesn't say anything about writing a tangent line. What you have to do here is kind of read between the lines in a manner of speaking. 
since there is no way to plug in 0 0.03 into this equation and do it without a calculator, we really have no other choice but to use this tangent line approximation. So that's sometimes half the battle with these problems is just identifying when you're supposed to do something that you know how to do. And in this case, again, uh, if you read between the lines, we need to do a tangent line approximation. So again, the first thing I would write down is the point slope formula. And then after that, figure out the point that you want to use and then the slope at that point. So this is going to require us to, again, kind of read between the lines in a manner of speaking. But what point are we dealing with? Well, they tell us that the derivative is being evaluated at zero. And we know from all these examples we've done before, that x value has to be the same x value as the point that you're using. So we know in this problem that our slope is equal to k. That slope, though, was um, figured out when x was equal to 0. So our point is 0 comma something. Can we find the y value so that we can use that to plug into our equation? The answer is yes. We have our equation from above, so all we need to do is plug in 0 into that equation and figure out what that y value is. Luckily, we can do this without a calculator. The sine of 0 times k, which would be just the sine of 0, is 0. 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. So now we have what we need. We have our point, which is 0, 3. We have our slope, which is k. And we can take all that and plug it in. Luckily in this problem, simplifying is very easy. With that minus 0 and adding the 3 to the other side, our tangent line is simply kx plus 3. And we want to approximate the value of 0 0.03. So just like from before, we're going to take that value of 0 0.03 and plug it in for x. Don't let that k throw you off. It's just a constant that we don't happen to know. So when we plug in 0 0.03, we get k times 0 0.03 plus 3, or if we kind of rewrite that a little bit, we have an approximation of 0.03k plus 3. One more example of these tangent line approximations, and in this example we'll be looking at a free response question. So these free response questions that give you tables of values are quite common. Uh, so you'll notice they give us some um, x values, they give us some um, y values if you want to make note f of x is another way of saying y, so there's a bunch of y values. And in that last row, uh, we're given a bunch of uh, derivative values, f prime of x. And again, just keep in mind that that's another way of saying slope. So we have x's, we have some y's, and we have some slopes. So it tells us that f is a function that's differentiable for all real numbers. The table above gives us values for f and its derivative from negative 1.5 to 1.5. They also tell us the second derivative is, uh, has the property that it's greater than 0 from negative 1.5 to 1.5. We want to write an equation of a tangent line at the point x equals 1. I know there's more stuff, but with that period, we should at least get that out of the way. So we're writing a tangent line approximation. So there's our point-slope form. And again, as a reminder, we need a point and a slope. The point in question is 1, x equals 1, so the y value is negative 4. So the point we're looking at is 1, comma, negative 4. We need the slope also at 1. And again, from the table above, you can see that our derivative f prime of x, or the slope, is equal to 5. So nice and easy, no mass steps you had to do there. We just had to identify that stuff in the table. And now we can take all that and plug it into our point slope form. If you take all that and simplify it, you'll get a, ta you'll get a tangent line equation of 5x minus 9. But just as one last chance I can maybe remind you of this, I would actually use this version instead. Um, you can sometimes run the risk of simplifying wrong, so the less simplifying you do, uh, maybe the better. But trust your math skills and uh, you make the best decision. Okay, once we have our tangent line equation, we can use it now to do what's in the second sentence of this question. We want to use that tangent line to approximate the value of f or f of 1.2, which means we just need to take 1.2 as our x value and plug it into our tangent line. If you plug in 1.2, multiply it by 5, and subtract 9, you'll get negative 3. So, not too bad uh, compared to some of these other examples we've done. Fairly straightforward. 
Now for the conceptual part, I guess, of this problem, and that is uh, the last sentence. Is this approximation greater than or less than the actual value of f1.2? Well, again, these uh, function values that we're approximating, we'll never know. If you look at the table, 1.2 isn't in the table, so we can't just cheat, I suppose, and look at the table and compare the two numbers to see if one is greater than or less than. We need to use the concept here of how we can verify that approximation is greater than or less than. And that all comes from second derivatives, or in other words, concavity. We know that the second derivative is always positive from negative 1.5 to 1.5, which means the graph is always concave up. And just as a little visual here, if you imagine a graph that's concave up, we know that the tangent line would always be below that point. Draw that again. If our graph is concave up, we know that our tangent line would always be below the curve. And if that tangent line is always below the curve, then we know the approximation would be less than. The tangent line represents our approximation, so we can say the approximation is less than the actual value because the graph is concave up. In this last slide, just to take note that the information contained in this slide we're really not going to use till the first section of chapter 4. Um, Outside of that, there's no practice problems for this slide in the assignment. Um, we're just going to take this little skill of writing a differential and kind of learn it now. And then right around the corner in the first section of chapter four, we'll start using it for something, which you'll see then. So as a little reminder uh, of notation we studied back in chapter two, and we've been using ever since, uh, Leibniz notation. Leibniz notation is when we write a derivative as dy over dx. But as a reminder, that was not a fraction. It was just a notation that that was a derivative. So as a reminder, we had three ways to write a derivative, f prime of x, f prime of x, y prime, and dy dx. So this little equation that I wrote here isn't a surprise. We know dy dx is equal to f prime of x. So again, this was not a fraction. This Leibniz notation was not meant to be seen as a fraction. But as it turns out, for something that we're going to need to do right away in the first section of chapter 4, we're going to have to treat it as a fraction. And I guess from here on out, even though we won't use it till the first section of chapter 4, we can start treating that as a fraction. So we can write the differential form of Leibniz notation as dy equals f prime of x dx. In other words, we can just take the dx and multiply it to the other side of the equation. So it's not a big deal. We're just trying to use that notation and treat it as a fraction. Again, for something that we're going to see in the first section of chapter 4. So really this little set of problems is just to practice some of your derivative skills. And I guess seeing the differential form of that. So the derivative of uh, x squared is of course just 2x. But instead of writing y prime, I'm going to put dy dx so that we can write the differential form, which is just 2x dx. So again, not a big deal. Um, again, why we're going to do this, uh, you'll just kind of have to wait till chapter 4.1 to see. The derivative of sine 2x is an application of the chain rule, so dy dx is equal to 2 cosine 2x. The differential form would just mean moving that dx to the other side, and I guess technically I should maybe put some parentheses here, uh, but we're not going to focus on putting parentheses or not, just moving that dx to the other side. In this third example, uh, keep in mind when you take a function and multiply it by a, another function, uh, we need to be thinking about using a product rule. And when we apply the product rule, we'll get negative x sine x plus cosine x. And of course, the differential form, nice and simple, just move the dx to the other side. And again, I'll put parentheses around all of that. In the last example, uh, we want to write the differential form dy for this function. Uh, the first thing we should do is, of course, write that in a little more derivative-friendly format, which would mean taking that square root and writing it as a power. And you should be recognizing that as definitely a application of the chain rule. We have stuff, not a plain x, to a power, so we have to call that stuff u. Um, we have to apply the chain rule. So when we apply the chain rule, we'll bring the power down. Leave the u alone. 
which is x squared plus 1. Reduce the power by 1. And don't make the classic mistake. We need to multiply by u prime, the derivative of that inner function. In this case, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So we'll multiply by 2x. When we simplify this, we can pull that 2x to the front and multiply it times the half. Half times 2x would just be x. And technically, before this lesson in this slide, you would have just left your derivative in that format. But to practice writing the differential form for something we're going to do in 4.1, we'll just send the dx to the other side. And that's the differential form. Again, not anything we're going to practice in this uh, uh, assignment, but we'll use right away in 4.1.